All right, I got asked to do a video where I derive the quadratic formula. And all you really need to do is start with the standard form equation of a quadratic, that is, no brackets, everything expanded out, and like terms collected. We're going to complete the square on it, set y equal to zero, because the quadratic formula helps us solve for x-intercepts, and then we're going to isolate for the variable x. This is going to take a few sheets of paper. I don't know where I put mine. It's probably over here somewhere. Yeah, there we go. So, let's do this. Let's, while we're here, so here's that formula, ax squared plus bx plus c. We're going to complete the square on it. To complete the square, first you factor whatever's in front of x squared out of the first two terms only. So, that's going to be an a. When we factor a out of ax squared, we get x squared. It's not a surprise. When we factor a out of b, we end up with b over a. And there is still an x attached to it. If you're wondering why that's the case, it's because b over a times a gives us the original b. I like leaving myself some room, and my constant stays outside the bracket untouched to start with. Now, the thing that gets added and subtracted within the brackets is usually half of this number squared. Well, that's going to be b over 2a, and I'm just going to square it because that's how you complete the square. And that b over 2a squared is both added and subtracted, so really there's no net change in what's going on here. These two technically cancel, but don't cancel them. The reason we've done this is to turn the first three terms of the bracket into a perfect square trinomial. I'm going to turn it into that perfect square trinomial right now. x plus b over 2a all squared. This squared binomial represents these first three terms of the bracket of the first line here. I need to multiply my a by this final term in order to remove this extra bracket because the a is being multiplied by all three of those original terms and also this one. That's going to give me minus a times b over 2a all squared plus c. Now I'm just going to clean that up one last time before I set y equal to zero. And actually, you know what, I'm going to set y equal to zero right now. That's ax plus b over 2a all squared minus. Now what I have here is b squared over 4a. This a in the denominator was squared, but one of them cancels with that a. So my exponent on this a in the denominator is just 1. Notice I've squared my b and I've squared my 2 as well, plus c. All right, so what we have here is an equation. The solutions of this satisfy the quadratic equation by definition because we've set y equal to 0, and the quadratic equation helps us solve for x-intercepts. We only have one x here, and so we just need to isolate for it. The rest of this is algebra. I'm going to move all of my constant terms over to the other side. That gives me positive b squared over 4a minus c. And all of this stays exactly the same. Oops, squared. I'm going to divide both of these sides by a. Now, I don't usually do it this way, but I teach high school, and most kids like seeing it this way. So those a's cancel, and what we get over here ends up being b squared over 4a squared minus c over a. And that equals my x plus b over 2a, all squared. Now, I'm a big fan of collect or getting a common denominator on this side you'll end up with b squared minus 4a squared c, nope, 4ac, all over 4a squared. 
The way that I've done that quickly is to see what the common denominator between these two will be. There's already an A in this one, and there's already an A in this one. So we just need to make this one match 4A squared. So I'd multiply the top and bottom by 4A. Not sure what I was thinking when I put that squared there. That still equals my x plus b over 2a squared on this side. And to cancel out the squared on this side, what I really need to do is take the square root of the other. Now you might see where this is going already. Here's my plus or minus, my square root, and my b squared minus 4ac. If you're a fan of the discriminant, you'll definitely recognize that. But we have to keep going in order to clean this up and turn it into the quadratic formula that we recognize. So, I still have to move my b plus 2a over to the other side. Let's do that first. Let's do uh, minus b over 2a. Notice I'm flipping the sign on this when it moves to the other side of the equation. Plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. And it's at this point that I realize this part of the fraction was square rootable the whole time. In fact, negative b over 2a, I should have done my equals x here, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a is equivalent. Square root of 4 is 2, square root of a squared is a. And we already have a common denominator between these two fractions. Thus, x equals the numerator of the first fraction plus or minus the numerator of the second fraction, because again, they already have a common denominator, and that common denominator is 2a. Ha! What a beautiful thing. So, by starting with the original quadratic formula, standard form, completing the square, which took us to the formula in pink, and then isolating for x with more algebra than you might have cared to do on your own, we were able to derive the quadratic formula. Only took me six minutes. Hope it takes you five on the test. Best of luck.